number 18 on the ongoing series on mechanical measurements. <coughs> Towards the last lecture, end of the last lecture, we were looking at the pyrometry. We briefly considered the nature of the black body radiation and we just had enough time to discuss or mention about two concepts, the brightness temperature and the color temperature. So, what we will do in this lecture is to continue from where we left off introduce these terminologies like the brightness and color temperatures and indicate how these can be used for measuring high temperatures, specifically surface temperature of bodies at high temperatures. When I say high temperatures, we are talking about the temperatures greater than about the silver point or the gold point. These are uh, already familiar to us from our discussion on the international temperature scale of 90. To just recapitulate, we go over again some of the basic concepts. The first one is the concept of the black body whose spectral emissive power depends on the wavelength lambda and the temperature T. And as I indicated earlier, the black body emissive power in watts per square meter micrometer is a unique function of wavelength as well as the temperature. So, if I fix the wavelength for example, if I fix the wavelength then it becomes a unique function only of temperature. So, that is the basic idea of uh, using this equation as a basis for thermometry in what is called a pyrometer. So, let us look at the some of the details we have already done this earlier. I have taken an example of uh, I have plotted the monochromatic emissive power as a function of temperature and uh, just recapitulate what I said a while ago, we will fix the wavelength at some particular value. So, you see that the value is given by this vertical line, the red line which is shown here, the vertical line, the color of the line is red because this is in the red region of the electromagnetic spectrum. It is in the visible part of the spectrum, you can see here this 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0.5, 0 0.6 between 0.6 and 0.7 micrometer. The value which I have shown, shown is actually used in parameter. And if you go up on this line, you see that uh, there is a unique uh, temperature variation of the monochromatic emissive power as a function of temperature. As you increase the temperature, the intensity or the value on the y axis is going up and it is going up by orders of magnitude. And here I have taken examples, first one being at 1500, the second one is 5800 and uh, these have been chosen specifically because the 5800 is roughly the upper limit up to which I am going to use the parameter. So, the point to notice is that there is a unique relationship between the y axis here which is q v lambda and the temperature once I fix the wavelength at a particular value. What we normally do in practice is because in the Planck distribution function if you go back and look at it, in the denominator I have e to the power of C 2 by lambda t, where C 2 is the second radiation constant which has a value of about 14000 and odd. So, this is a large number and you see that if lambda times t product if lambda t times product, typically for example, lambda equal to 0 0.5 or 0 0.6 micrometer. If we, even if we take temperature of the order of 5000 or 6000, which we talked about 
as the solar temperature, you see that this lambda t product will be 0.6 times 6000 about uh, 3600, C 2 is about 14400 and therefore, 14400 divided by this will be 0.6 into 6600, it is a factor of e to the power of 4 or 5 and this factor is much larger than the factor 1 here. Therefore, sometimes what we do is especially for the sake of considering a parameter measurement of temperature, we will ignore this factor minus 1 and that is called the Wayne's approximation to the black body function and that is what I have given here. So, the Wayne's approximation says that we can ignore the factor minus 1 in the denominator. The difference between the Planck function and this function is only that I have neglected the minus 1 in the denominator. So, q b lambda t equal to c 1 by lambda to the power of 5 1 over e to the power of c 2 by lambda t and if I fix the value of lambda this is a fact this is a fixed value c 1 is a constant c 2 is a constant lambda is fixed you see that q b is proportional is equal to some constant divided by e to the power of some constant divided by t. So, there is a definite relationship between q b lambda and the temperature. Let us look at the error which is committed by using the Wayne's approximation instead of the Planck function. You notice that I am going to neglect that minus 1 factor in the denominator as compared to e to the power of c 2 by lambda t and uh, for the kind of values here I have taken from 0 to 5000 Kelvin which is the normal range we are going to be interested in in practice. You see that the maximum error in using the Wayne's approximation as compared to the Planck function is only about 1 percent and this is so this is small enough to be of no concern to us. Therefore, we will assume that for the purpose of pyrometry I can use the Wayne's approximation and therefore, that simplifies the calculations a little bit even though there is no nothing wrong in using the full Planck function and here I have you should notice that I have used 0.65 micrometer as the fixed value for the wavelength. So, the thermometer which uses the black body function fixes the wavelength at a particular value and makes the black body function a function of temperature alone and that is the basis for thermometry. So, let us look at the source of black body radiation because in a laboratory if you want to calibrate a, a, a parameter I must have a source of radiation which is a black body. The normal way of making or obtaining black body radiation is to use what is called a cavity furnace. So, the cavity furnace consists of you see here this black thing is electrically heated a refractory sphere something like 0.3 meter diameter and uh, this sphere is, is placed in a box with the insulation here. So, that the heat loss from the sides of the pericle cavity is reduced. We also have a temperature control controller which will adjust the heat input to the electrical heaters such that the temperature is fixed or kept fixed at a particular value we want and the temperature is sensed by a sensor which is attached to the wall of the electrically heated sphere. And there is a narrow opening of 50 millimeter diameter as you have shown here 50 millimeter diameter opening with a 150 millimeter diameter some kind of a tube attached to it and uh, the radiation which is leaving from the sphere through this opening to the outside approximates black body radiation very closely. And sometimes what is done is behind the heated sphere I can also have a phase change taking place in a material of given melting point. For example, I can have the cavity behind the cavity I have a receptacle or an enclosure in which I am going to have a metal which is going to be allowed to undergo a phase change that means it is going to melt you start from a low temperature approach the temperature of melting. So, the material starts melting during the process in which it is melting when the material is present in both in the form of solid and the liquid you will have a constant temperature that constant temperature is nothing but the liquidus temperature of the substance and the cavity will be exactly at that temperature and therefore, the black body can will give you black body radiation corresponding to 
the melting temperature of the solid which is undergoing a phase change. In fact, we can choose different materials with different melting points, so that the black body can operate at constant temperatures during the time it is undergoing this melting process. It will be at a constant temperature and therefore, I can have different temperatures achieved. For example, gold point you can have gold which is melting or you can have the silver point, the zinc point, lead point and so on depending on the material you have chosen. The radiator cast the characteristic of the cavity is shown here and uh, in fact, if you remember what I said, I have a large spherical cavity here, this is a large spherical cavity of 0.3 meter diameter with a small hole on the side. So, the opening has an area of uh, the, the, the pi d squared by 4, pi into 50 square millimeter, 50 millimeter square divided by 4, that is the area, whereas the surface area of the sphere is pi d squared and uh, 0.3 meter diameter, you can see that it is a very large area compared to the area of the opening. What I have done in the next slide is to show what happens to the effective emissivity of the radiation coming from the opening. Emissivity is something which tells me how close is the radiation to that of black body radiation. If the emissivity is very small, that means that the radiation coming out from that uh, opening is not at all like uh, black body radiation. If it is very small, it is not like black body. If it is very close to one, it is like black body radiation. Therefore, what we want to have is a black body radiation coming out of the hole because that is the basis for thermometry. Therefore, what I should do is I should have a ratio opening area to cavity surface area as small as possible number one. Number two, I must choose the surface to have essentially a very large emissivity to start with. Different surfaces have different emissivities. That means that if you have two surfaces, one black surface and one surface which is not black, if you heat them to the same temperature, the black surface will give you a heat, a, will uh, emit radiation according to the Planck distribution function full amount. Whereas, if the surface is not black, it has got let us say the it uh, emits a fraction of that emitted by a black body at the same temperature, that fraction we call as the emissivity. So, uh, remembering that emissivity is a property of the surface, if I have a cavity whose surface already has a high enough emissivity. In this case, I have taken a cavity surface uh, which was which has which has got an emissivity of 0.95, and if I make the opening very small compared to that, for example, I can have an opening 1 over point uh, uh, less than 10 percent, less than 5 percent of the area of the surface of that sphere, then you can see that I am approaching the emissivity equal to 1, that means it is approaching the black body radiation. Therefore, the requirement of a furnace or the black body cavity furnace is that you have a very large area for this surface of that cavity. Let it have as high an emissivity as possible to start with and then make this opening as small as possible. Of course, if you make the opening very small, the amount of radiation coming out will be small, but that is a part of the price we pay for getting or approximating the black body characteristic very closely. So, what comes out of this hole, if you have a very narrow hole compared to the size of the cavity is black body radiation. So, the black body radiation will be used basically as a calibration. Now, let us look at the, we go back to what we showed earlier. If you fix the wavelength at a particular value, we know that the brightness, the, the, in, the amount of radiation coming from the surface is a function of temperature given by the Wayne's displacement, Wayne's law now instead of the Planck's law because we are approximating. So, the brightness temperature is actually defined such that the emissive power of the actual surface is the same as that of a hypothetical black body at the brightness temperature T b. Why do we do like this? Suppose the surface in question is not a black surface, we know that it will, res, it will emit less than a black body at the same temperature. So, I want to now compare it with a black body which is going to emit the same amount that means it will be at a different temperature obviously, lower than the actual temperature of the body such that it is going to give the same amount of heat per unit area per unit frequency interval. So, if I fix the lambda constant lambda if I fix a, the lambda value by some suitable arrangement 
the amount of energy emitted per unit time per unit area per unit wavelength interval by the black body is given by q b lambda which is now at the temperature t b which I call as the brightness temperature which should be exactly equal to the q a lambda a stands for the actual actual surface at the temperature actual temperature T a which is the temperature. In fact, what is my intention? My intention is to know what is this T a in, in reference to this T b. So, if I can get a relationship between T a and T b, I will be able to measure use I will be able to use this method by measuring T b I will be able to find out what is the actual temperature. So, let us look at the calculation of how we are going to do that. So, the brightness temperature simply says that if you go back to the previous slide q a lambda t a equal to q b lambda t b and let us assume that the actual surface has an epsilon or the emissivity equal to epsilon lambda this is a fraction less than 1 multiplied by according to Wien's law c 1 by lambda to the power 5 e to the power of minus c 2 by lambda t a this is the q a lambda what is given here this is q a lambda this must be equal to q b lambda at t b. So, q b lambda at t b black body epsilon is 1. So, there is nothing here this factor 1 c 1 by lambda to the power of 5 e to the power of minus c 2 by lambda t b. Now, notice that c 1 by lambda to the power of 5 can be cancelled off from the two side therefore, I have e to epsilon lambda e to the power of minus c 2 by lambda t a equal to e to the power of minus c 2 by lambda t b. I can take logarithms on the both sides and rearrange to get the equation which is given here. This is called the ideal parameter equation which says that reciprocal of the actual temperature minus the reciprocal of the brightness temperature equal to lambda by C 2 this is coming only from here lambda by C 2 logarithm of epsilon lambda. So, you notice that lambda is fixed the brightness temperature is obtained by measurement which we will see how it is done in a little while from now the actual temperature is what I want if I know the epsilon lambda that is if I know the emissivity is the surface whose temperature I am trying to measure then I will be able to obtain the actual temperature knowing the brightness temperature knowing the value of lambda at which the measurement has been made knowing the emissivity of the surface. This is the basically what we do in pyrometry. So, the pyrometer consists of an instrument which is going to help us in measuring T b and if we know epsilon lambda by some means by some other measurement then we will be able to use this pyrometer equation to calculate the temperature. It is called the ideal parameter equation because I am using logarithm of epsilon lambda here. Later we will see that we will have to modify this epsilon lambda as an effective emissivity which will take into account some losses which we will talk about a little later on. So, the idea is to measure the brightness temperature. The instrument I am going to use for this purpose for measuring the brightness temperature is actually a comparator which compares the brightness of two objects the object whose temperature I want to measure I want to compare it with a black body whose temperature I can measure or I know. Okay. So, I compare these two and I bring a match between these two if you remember what we talked about earlier this is the match we are talking about the amount of heat coming out per unit area per unit time must be the same for the two at a given wavelength. So, this match is what we are doing this match is called if the two are in match we say that they are equally bright that is why the brightness temperature. So, what I do is I will use an instrument which is shown schematically here. Let me just describe all the parts of this instrument we have the target whose temperature I want to measure I have a field lens which which will gather light coming from this target and then it will be focused on to the plane of a filament which is shown here and uh, the filament is actually run by a, a battery a variable resistor a rammeter and so on. So, we will come back to this in a little while from now the radiation coming from the target is made to pass through an aperture. So, that stray light is not entering the instrument it is an optical instrument then it passes through a gray filter which will if necessary reduce the brightness 
by a known factor, then it falls on the filament and now as far as the objective lens is concerned, it receives light which is coming both from the target which has passed through the gray filter and then it also gets receives radiation from the filament which is run by this battery. Okay. By variable resistor varying this resistance here, I can vary the temperature of the filament and therefore, the amount of radiation comes from the filament. So, I can in other words change the brightness of the filament by changing the variable resistor position. When I change the variable resistor position, the current through the filament is changed and the current in fact becomes a measure of the brightness of the filament or it becomes a measure of the temperature of the filament. So, this is usually a tungsten filament which is run by a battery variable resistor and an ammeter. So, before it, uh, it is gathered, it is looked at by the eye of the person who is making the measurement, it also passes through both the light gathered from the target as well as from the filament passes through a red filter. This red filter along with the eye, the eye of the person who is looking at it, it has got a certain response to the light which is falling on the retina. So, the two together will help us in finding out or selecting a certain wavelength of operation for this instrument. Okay. So, I am going to look simultaneously at two things, the object whose temperature I want to measure and I am also going to or the operator is going to look at also the filament whose brightness I can vary. So, the operator will have to adjust the resistance such that the two, the target and the filament appear equally bright and which can be verified by making the proper adjustment. For example, if the temperature of the filament is very high, you can see here the filament is appearing bright in a, ba in a background, red background which is which appears to be dull. If you go here, if the temperature of the filament is too small, then you will see that it appears dark, looks like a shadow in the background which is brighter. And in fact, if the adjustment has been made properly, you will see that there is a correct adjustment, then the brightness, the filament and the background are equally bright, there is no contrast between them. So, what happens is that the filament and the background have merged together, the filament has become invisible and therefore, it has vanished and therefore, we say it is a vanishing filament parameter. So, in the vanishing filament parameter, we make the adjust adjustment of the variable resistor, so that the ammeter current is varied, so that you will see that the target and the filament appear equally bright. So, with this basic understanding of this instrument, let us look at some of the features. Suppose the filament, assume that the filament can work at a maximum temperature of let us say 3000 degrees Kelvin, okay. because the filament cannot appear at any temperature you want, it has got a limitation. If it goes beyond some uh, particular value, the filament will melt and uh, you will have to replace the uh, filament. So, the filament has a maximum temperature up to which it can go and therefore, theoretically the maximum brightness temperature I can measure using this filament is the maximum temperature of the filament itself. Okay. Therefore, if the target is a temperature higher than the filament temperature, what I am going to do is I am going to use a gray filter which will reduce the intensity by a factor which can be calibrated or a known factor. So, in, a, in other words, I can reduce the amount of radiation which is coming to the target by using this gray filter and reduce it by a fraction known fraction, for example, half or one fourth or one eighth and so on, so that the intensity of light which is coming from the target is equal to or less than the maximum, the intensity of the filament at the maximum of its temperature. In other words, I am going to choose the range of the instrument by using the gray filter of desired transmittivity. If you go back now to the ideal parameter equation, we had lambda by C 2 L n epsilon lambda equal to 1 over T a minus 1 over T b. Now, 
the effective emissivity will be nothing but epsilon lambda multiplied by because we are going to put a gray filter it is going to reduce the intensity it is like multiplying this by a factor the factor equal to half or one fourth or one eighth and so on. So, I will say that this epsilon lambda will be nothing but the actual emissivity of the surface multiplied by the fraction which is allowed to get into the instrument and in fact, uh, we can also account for other losses like for example, in the case of the vanishing filament parameter, there are so many surfaces, there is a lens here, the front surface, the back surface, the gray filter, the front and back surface and so on. At each surface, some amount of reflection will take place. Therefore, it is like actually like a loss as far as the amount of uh, radiation which is coming into the instrument is concerned. Therefore, we can club, them, club, to, club together all these factors into what is called a transmittivity or a transmittance and uh, we can say that the in this equation epsilon lambda is actually the emissivity of the target multiplied by the transmittivity of the optical train. So, if we do that this epsilon lambda will be called the effective emissivity instead of the actual emissivity of the target. Second point suppose I do the following, suppose I keep the filament at a constant temperature, suppose I keep the filament at a constant temperature, I adjust the, the factor in this gray filter, if I have a variable filter with various filter filtering coefficients or various fractions which I can allow, then I can adjust the gray filter alone without adjusting the ammeter at all, just keep the variable the ammeter at a particular value which you choose, so that it is at a given temperature. For example, it may be maintained at the gold point temperature for example. Then by simply adjusting the gray filter, I will be able to bring a match between the target and the filament. So, in this arrangement, what is going to happen is that the filament is going to op operate all the time at the same temperature and therefore, theoretically its life will be increased number 1 from the point of view of the operation of the filament itself it is very good because you are not subjecting it to cycling in temperature. The second point is I am going to have a fixed point fixed reference temperature the gold point temperature here as the reference point with which I am going to calibrate the temperature of the target. Therefore, just by varying the factor epsilon lambda or the effective emissivity of the target by changing the fraction which is allowed by the gray filter to pass through, I will be able to do the thermometry by using a single temperature of the filament which can be chosen as the gold point or the silver point or whatever you would like to have which is usually at a temperature which is much lower than which is low enough for the filament to last for a long time that is a one way of doing it. That means that we are bringing back the idea of have a single having a single fixed temperature as, as a part of the thermometry or the ITS 90. So, that is the advantage of that. So, two ways of operating the instrument one is of course, to have a filament run at different temperatures and in fact, the temperature of the filament it becomes becomes the brightness temperature and in the pyrometer equation this will keep on changing. Then uh, we use this instrument this uh, to measure the temperature of the actual surface. In the second arrangement I am going to keep this constant I am going to vary this portion. So, in other words Therma, the pyrometer can be used in two ways. One is keeping the right hand side constant and working with the variation in the this factor here, or you can keep this constant and uh, work with the change in the right hand side. So, these are the two ways of uh, using the parameter, and the second way is in fact more satisfactory from the point of view from uh, the theoretical point of view also, because we are going to have a single fixed temperature as a reference for thermometry. So, now just uh, to complete our discussion on the vanishing filament parameter, I said that we are going to choose the particular wavelength by the combination of the red filter and the eye and uh, that is explained in the graph here. The eye response of a typical person is like this, the transmittance versus wavelength for the red filter or in the case of eye response you just replace this transmittance by the response of the eye for different wavelengths and you see that our uh, vision has got this kind of a response. And the red filter will uh, cut off everything above certain wavelength. So, below that it will transmit it will transmit nothing, 
and above that it will transmit uh, almost like 90 percent here. Okay. It is a short cut off here, below this it is not going to allow anything. Therefore, if, the, if you look at the product of these two functions here and that is in fact, this is something proportional to uh, this uh, triangle I have shown here. The radiation which is allowed to enter the enter the eye is basically the this portion which is roughly at 0 0.65 microns micrometers centered and a small window around that. So, this is the reason this is how you are going to fix the lambda in the case of the vanishing filament parameter. Let us look at a few of the characteristics which can be derived from the uh, ideal parameter, equa parameter equation. For example, if I vary the emissivity what happens to brightness temperature. Suppose I take an object at a 1500 Kelvin and I just find out what is the effect of the emissivity. You can see that between 0 0.7 and 0 0.76 I have varied more or less there is a linear variation and you can see that between 0 0.7 and 0.76 it varies between 0 0.1465 and about 1473 or so. Okay. So, 65 and 73 about 8 or 9 degrees variation will be there. So, it is not all that sensitive within this within small in other words I can allow some amount of uh, error in the emissivity without compromising the, the accuracy of the measurement. This is easily derived from the parameter equation. Suppose I take the brightness temperature as a function of emissivity I want to see. Suppose the actual temperature is 1000 Kelvin, 2000 Kelvin you can see that if the emissivity is very low like 0 0.1 the temperature the brightness temperature of the object at 2000 Kelvin is only 1600. You will notice here that the brightness temperature is always less than or equal to the actual temperature. When epsilon becomes 1, the brightness temperature and the actual temperature become exactly equal to each other because 1 over T A minus 1 over T B equal to whatever is on the left hand side. If you put epsilon lambda equal to 1, logarithm of 1 is equal to 0. So, the left right hand side becomes 0 and therefore, the brightness temperature and the actual temperature are the same. This is a, after all a definition. A black body should have a brightness temperature equal to its own actual temperature. Any other surface will have a temperature brightness temperature lower than that of a black body. Okay. That is what is clear from this. I have taken two examples one at 1000 Kelvin the other at 2000 Kelvin. Suppose I do the following experiment this is the brightness temperature I am keeping constant equal to the goal point 37.6 Kelvin if you remember from our ITS 90, this is the temperature of the gold melting gold and I am uh, taking lambda equal to 0.66 micrometer as in the case of a vanishing pyramid parameter. Then if I keep this constant with different emissivities you can see a surface with emissivity of 0.2 requires to be almost at 1500 Kelvin to be in match with the gold point temperature. However, if you go al almost up to 1 very close to 1 you see that the temperature will match exactly. The actual temperature and the gold point temperature are going to be more or less the same. Therefore, this will give you some kind of an idea as to what is going to happen to the difference between the actual temperature and the brightness temperature. In practice, we also require some idea about the emissivity values of various surfaces and uh, there is no best way of doing it. Most of the times what one has to do is to if you are going to use a parameter regularly in your particular application it is better to do a set of experiments such that the emissivity is known for a particular surface which you are going to use in your in your application make a, a calibration of the emissivity of the surface so that you can use that that is the best method however just as a guide i have given some values which are taken from the references the surface temperature is given here 600 1200 etc these are the approximate emissivity values which are given for example, I n can vary between 0 0.2 and 0 0.37 between 600 and 1200. If it is unoxidized, if it is oxidized you can see that it changes quite a drastically to 0 0.85 and 0 0.89. And uh, if you take molten cast iron 0 0.29, molten steel 0 0.28 and uh, nickel 0 0.75, fire clay this is very common in furnace practice. We use fire clay as the surface material for the uh, furnace. 0.52 and 0.45, silica bricks again 0.54 and 0.46. These are all high temperature insulating materials. Aluminum bricks, for example, 0.23 and 0.19. So, 
So, if I am going to measure the temperature of the surface of the brick using a parameter, I can use an approximate value of 0.23 for the emissivity and make the measurement. Now, the other question is we have actually answered this question a little bit earlier also. If the error in emissivity is given, let us say I have taken between 0 and 10 percent, the error in temperature is uh, something little smaller. So, the percentage error in the temperature is slightly smaller than the percentage error in the emissivity as you can see from here. All this is derivable using the ideal parameter equation, uh, the parameter equation. So, let me take an example and uh, work out the numbers so that it become clear as to what we are talking about. So, I have a certain target which has a brightness temperature of 1700 Kelvin when observed by a vanishing filament parameter of the type I just now described it operates at the wavelength of 0.66 micrometer. So, the emitter of the object at this wavelength is known to be 0.86, this is given to us. So, we want to find out what is the actual temperature of the object, this is basically an application of the ideal parameter equation. The second part however, requires a little bit of work, if the emissivity has an uncertainty of plus or minus 0.01 and the brightness temperature has an uncertainty of plus or minus 5 Kelvin, what is the uncertainty in the actual temperature of the target? The second part requires the use of the error propagation formula which we have discussed earlier. So, we will work out this temperature this solution on the board by taking the numbers given in that example. So, we, we are using this is example 19, the first part I am given the brightness temperature. which is 1700 Kelvin, lambda is specified as 0 0.66 micrometer, the emissivity of the target is also specified as 0 0.86 and uh, we know that the second radiation constant C 2 is 14390 micrometer. Kelvin. So, these are the data given. So, all I have to use the use the make use of the ideal parametric parameter equation 1 over T a minus 1 over T b equal to lambda by C 2 logarithm of epsilon lambda. We are making the assumption this is the effective emissivity. because it is not specified, we can simply assume it to be the effective emissivity. So, I have to I have given all this constant, this is given, this quantity is given, all the other things are known, all I have to do is to obtain the value of T a. I can rewrite this equation as T a equal to 1 over 1 over T b plus lambda by C 2 logarithm of epsilon lambda and I can substitute the values. 1 over 1700 plus 0 0.66 divided by 14390 logarithm of 0 0.86 and if you work it out it comes to 1720.2 Kelvin. This 0 0.2 I can ignore it is not significant. So, I can simply say 1720 Kelvin. This is the actual temperature of the surface whose brightness temperature is given as 1700 Kelvin and the effective emissivity of the target is 0 0.86. The second part requires the calculation of the error. So, the part B I am given delta epsilon lambda is equal to 0 0.01. And uh, we are also given that the delta T b actually you can say this is plus or minus again this is plus or minus pi Kelvin. I would like to find out what is delta T a that is the problem which is given to us. So, what I am going to do is I am going to use the following formula. 
So, we will say the delta T A is equal to plus or minus square root of partial derivative of <coughs> the expression for T A with respect to T B multiplied by delta T B whole square plus partial of T A with respect to epsilon lambda multiplied by delta epsilon lambda whole square. So, all I have to do is to calculate this is known, this quantity is given plus or minus phi Kelvin, this is given as plus or minus 0.01, I have to obtain the two partial derivatives and these are also called the influence coefficient. So, I can say that this is delta dou T A by dou T B is nothing but the influence coefficient i t b and this is the i epsilon lambda. So, I have to take the expression which we used in the first part, take the partial derivative and therefore, I can obtain the following. This will come out to be minus 1 over 1 plus 1 over T b plus lambda by C 2 log epsilon lambda whole squared multiplied by minus 1 over T b squared. So, we substitute the values which are given in the problem and uh, you can verify this gives you a value equal to 1.02 4. So, similarly we work out the other influence coefficient, this is given by epsilon lambda, this is i epsilon lambda, this will be minus again 1 over 1 over T b plus lambda by C 2 whole squared multiplied by lambda by C 2 into 1 over epsilon lambda. All I have to do is to substitute all the values and uh, you will get a value of y minus 157.81. So, the two influence coefficients are available to us now. So, I can calculate now the error in the actual temperature as plus or minus square root of 1.024 into 5 whole square plus when you are using the error propagation formula this minus will not come into the picture because it will be all squares of terms therefore, this will be 157.81 into 0 0.01 because there is the error given whole square and this work out to be plus or minus 5.4 Kelvin. So, we will say that the temperature estimated of the target is 1720 plus or minus 5.4 Kelvin. So, there is a error bar of plus or minus 5 which is quite acceptable when you are measuring temperatures as large as 1700 Kelvin. It is simply not possible to have a better error specification for this, because this is the nature of the quantity we are measuring. We are measuring a large temperature and the temperatures of the order of plus or minus 5 is quite acceptable in practical applications. So, this is a typical problem based on the vanishing filament parameter and the concept of the brightness temperature. Now, we look at a second concept which is called the color or the ratio temperature. In the first case, if you remember, we compared the intensity or the brightness of two objects and uh, by comparison, we said that they share some common temperature which we call as the brightness temperature. Now, I can also do the following. Suppose, I choose two wavelengths lambda 1 and lambda 2. Suppose, I have the ratio of the brightness at these two 
lambdas for the object whose temperature I want to determine. If I compare this ratio with that of a hypothetical black body which also has got the same ratio, then I can say that the temperature indicated by the ratio of the black body intensities or black body brightness values at these two wavelengths is going to give you a temperature which is which is shared by the two. So, this we call as the ratio temperature because it is the ratio of brightnesses or two values or the temperature is called the color temperature. Color because we are going to use two different wavelengths and if you are using the visible part of the spectrum lambda 1 lambda 2 will correspond to different colors of the electron the, the visible spectrum. So, the definition would be the actual temperature actual surface is the temperature T a and the ratio is Q a lambda 1 T a divided by Q a lambda 2 T a and uh, please remember that at lambda 1 and lambda 2 the object may have different emissivities. It may have an emissivity of epsilon lambda 1 at a lambda 1 and epsilon lambda 2 at lambda 2. Whereas, in the case of the black body epsilon is the same whether it is a temperature it is a lambda 1 or lambda 2 and therefore, the right hand side is simply the Wien's uh, approximation written for the numerator and the denominator without any epsilon coming into picture. Whereas, in the light left hand side I have got the epsilon will be coming into picture. Therefore, the ratio of the emissivity is also is going to come here depending on the whether the ratio of emissivity is at lambda 1 lambda 2 is greater than 1 or less than 1 you may have at a T c which is less than T b T a or greater than T a. Whereas, in the case of the brightness temperature the brightness temperature was always smaller than the actual temperature. Here because of the nature of the definition of the color temperature it may be either greater or less than or equal to the actual temperature. Suppose, we choose two wavelengths which are very close to each other lambda 1 and lambda 2 are very close to each other and suppose that the emissivities of the object or the target at these two temperatures are the same or very close to each other then you see that the ratio temperature the T c will be the same as the actual temperature. In fact, that is the reason why we use it as the ratio or color temperature uh, because we would like to make the ratio temperature equal to the actual temperature by choosing two wavelengths close to each other. So, that the emissivity is not a strongly varying between these two values. So, that you get an equality between the actual and the color temperature. So, that is all the basis to it. So, I have uh, shown this using the same figure which I used earlier for the brightness temperature. I have chosen two colors one red here another blue the blue line corresponds to the blue part of the visible spectrum red color corresponds to. So, you take the ratios of these two quantities red here and uh, blue here similarly red here and blue here. So, the ratio temperature will be characteristic of the black body here or the black body here and so on that is the basis for the color temperature. Let us look at the some of the details we will uh, go back go to the board and make a few definitely few derivations we will make. So, that we will understand what is going on. So, the basically ratio or color temperature is based on the following Q a lambda 1 Q a lambda 2 is equal to we we, we are just re rewriting what we wrote on the slide there. So, I am equating the ratios the actual at a temperature T a and the black body at a color temperature equal to T c. Okay. So, the left hand side I can write it. So, I will say left hand side the same as the actual is nothing but epsilon lambda 1 I am using the Wien's approximation multiplied by C 1 by lambda to the power of 5 lambda 1 to the power of 5 e to the power of minus C 2 
divided by lambda 1 T A divided by epsilon lambda 2 again C 1 by lambda 2 to the power of 5 e to the power of minus C 2 divided by lambda 2 T A. So, the C 1 can be dispensed with. So, this can uh, this will become actually ratio epsilon instead of lambda 1 I will just say epsilon 1 by epsilon 2. So, that it is easier to write it multiplied by lambda 2 by lambda 1 to the power of 5 this e to the power of I can write it as minus c 2 by lambda 1 minus plus c 2 by lambda 2 multiplied by 1 over t a. Okay. So, the left hand side is simply given by this quantity. What about the right hand side? The right hand side is given by the same quantity. If I replace T a by T c and I will put epsilon 1 by epsilon 2 equal to 1 that is all what I have to do. So, that means that this fact will be there, this fact will become 1 and this will become 1 over T c. So, let me write it in the next. Uh, so, the right hand side will be nothing but epsilon 1 by epsilon 2 is now equal to 1. So, lambda 2 by lambda 1 to the power of 5 exponential of minus c 2 by lambda 1 lambda 2. So, I will just write it lambda 2 lambda 1 and lambda 2. So, this will be lambda 1 plus c 2 by lambda 2 into 1 over T c. So, if I equate the left hand side to the right hand side and manipulate the two sides, I will be able to get several expressions which, which will be useful in practice. So, this slide shows <coughs> the ratio of the actual temperature to the color temperature and it can be shown by following the argument which I gave on the board 1 over 1 plus logarithm of the ratio of the emissivities epsilon lambda 1 epsilon lambda 2 divided by logarithm of the black body function at lambda 1 multiplied by lambda 2 to the power of 5 divided by black body function at lambda 2 multiplied by lambda 1 to the power of 5. <coughs> and if you remember the definition of the color temperature, this ratio is the same as this ratio. Therefore, I can receive replace this by this at the actual temperature of the body. This is the ratio at the color temperature, this is the ratio at the actual temperature, these are the same. Another way of recasting this equations is to write the equation in the following form, because this is what is going to be useful for pyrometry or the two color pyrometry, because we are using two different wavelengths. T a equal to C 2 divided by 1 over lambda 2 minus 1 over lambda 1, this is the numerator divided by logarithm of Q a lambda 1 divided by Q a lambda 2, these are actually measured the brightness of the object at the wavelength equal to lambda 1 at wavelength equal to lambda 2 this ratio lambda 1 by lambda 2 whole to the power of 5 these are the two wavelengths we already know and epsilon lambda 2 epsilon lambda 1 is also are also supposed to be known. <coughs> so, in practice when we are using a parameter or a two color parameter I am actually measuring this quantity this q a lambda 1 by q a lambda 2 is actually measured and the rest of the things are known epsilon lambda 2 epsilon lambda 1 are known lambda 1 lambda 2 are specified wavelengths at which we are going to make the measurement. So, everything is known this is known that the actual temperature can be calculated using this. So, this is basically what the pyrometer does we are not as such interested in the color temperature what we are interested is in the actual temperature which can be obtained by the measurement. The measurement we are going to make is the ratio of the 
the brightnesses at two different wavelengths for the same target. So, one way of doing it is to use a two color parameter and it consists of the hot target from which I am going to take the radiation coming out. I am going to collect the radiation using the objective lens and it falls on a prism and one part is reflected upwards, the other part is reflected downwards. There are two mirrors which are going to basically give me two beams from the same source. So, I am getting two beams from the same source and one of them is going to pass through a red filter. This red filter is different from the red filter we had earlier. This is going to allow a very narrow band around the red value equal to 0.65 plus or minus a little bit. Similarly, a blue filter and there is in front of that there is a there is a wheel with two holes or many many holes if you want it is run by a by a synchronous motor this is rotating. So, it will allow the radiation through this this path to pass through this for some some time and after some time it will allow here therefore, the the photo diode here or the photo detector here is going to respond to the radiation comes the hot target at uh, lambda 1. This uh, photo detector is going to res respond to the, the radiation coming at lambda 2, the blue radiation is lambda 2, red is lambda 1. Then it is going to amplify the signal and then take care of any manipulations because we have the relation here I want the ratio of these two, the ratio of these two and so on. So, this manipulation can be done by what is called a scalar and then it is indicated by meter. The indicated indication by the meter is the actual temperature. So, what the two color parameter does is to take two beams of radiation coming from the same source and the one passes through the red filter, the other passes through the blue filter, takes the ratio of these two brightnesses and then gives you the temperature directly. So, what we will do in the next lecture is to consider example number 20 which we are not able to do now. We will work it out and then once we have done we will try to look at a new topic because thermometry more or less we are going to complete here. I may touch upon a little bit on the measurement of gas temperature just to give a flavor but we will not go deeply into it because it requires advanced knowledge. So, what I will do is I will just touch upon temperature measurement of gases and then take a look at measurement of other quantities. Thank you.